Hawker Parson was educated as an economist in the institutionalist tradition. And uh, he taught economics for a number of years and uh, before he moved to sociology uh, in the 1930s. During this time, he uh, developed the notion that while economics uh, deal with the means and relationship of social action, sociology deal uh, with its value and Parson called this as the analytical factor view. In Economy and Society, published in 1956, Parson and Nels Schnauzer suggested that both sociology and economics can be understood as part of the general theory of social system. Parson argued that the economy is a subsystem which interchanges with the other three subsystems. What he meant by number one, the polity, number two, the interactive subsystem, and number three, the cultural motivational subsystem. The concept of a subsystem is indicative of Weber's notion of spheres, but while the latter refer only to values. The economic subsystem also has an adaptive function as well as distinct institutional structure. From the 1980 onward, despite the effort of Parson and Schnelzer in the mid-1950s and 1960s to rewrite economic sociology, it attracted very little attention, and by the 1970s, the field was somewhat stagnant. A number of works inspired in one way or another by the Marxist tradition and its general revival in the late 1960s and early 1970s had made their appearance in this period. In the 1980s, a few studies suggested a new stirring of interest. The year 1985 marks the point of departure with new ideas came into focus in a theoretical essay by Mark Granovator entitled Economic Action and Social Structure. The problem of embeddedness. In this article, Granovator spoke of new economic sociology that drawn on three elements of sociology, that is networks, theory, cultural sociology, and organizational sociology. Granovator associates all economic sociology with the economy and society perspective of Parsons, Smelzer, and W. Emo, and with industrial sociology. According to Granovator, these two approaches had been full of life in the 1960s, but then suddenly died out. According to Granovator, the new economic sociology attacks neoclassical arguments in fundamental ways and it wants to take on key economic topics rather than focus on the periphery one. Since the mid-1980s, new economic sociology has carved out a portion for itself in the US sociology. It is well represented at a number of universities. Courses are routinely offered in sociology departments. A section in the American Sociological Association has been formed and a number of high quality monographs have been produced, such as the transformation of corporate control in 1990, 90, structural hold 1992, and the social meaning of money 1994, organizing America well power and the origin of corporate capitals in year 2002, organizational dynamics of market transition 1992, economic ideology and Japanese industrial policy 2010, then the new grand bourgeoisie under post-communism, 
Central Europe, Russia, and China compared to Indian time. Gravitzer's uh, idea on embeddedness argued that networks are central to this concept of embeddedness. His definition of embeddedness is quite general and said that economic actions are embedded in concrete ongoing system of social relation. However, embeddedness is not the end of the road for Granovator. In the overall context of his theoretical consideration, embeddedness is just one element in explaining economic phenomena by sociological means. There are many more contribution from sociologists to economic sociology uh, that include contribution um, on using structural sociology and networks, contributions uh, using organization theory, contributions using cultural sociology, and contribution building a historical and comparative tradition. And the contributions by James Coleman and also the interest based sociology uh, by Bourdieu and other European contributions to economic sociology.